Hello everybody and welcome back or to my channel if it's your first time here. It is time for the end of the month reading wrap up. We are doing August and I have a few books to talk about. This is almost the end of my summer and so I have a lot of time to read. Unfortunately that won't be the case when the school year does actually start and so let's just take advantage of this, this blessing that we have. Okay, so it seems like I left my copy of Night Bitch <laughs> at my house and so I don't have it with me here. The reason I got this book, I kind of started reading it without actually knowing what it was about, but I really liked the cover. I just, I like the color red, I thought that the red nails next to the raw meat looked kind of cool and I just wanted it on my bookshelf and so I bought the book and it definitely was different than the books I usually read, not that I didn't enjoy it. Um, it was in third person. Um, Night Bitch is a new mother. She is kind of angry because she had to give up her job in order to take to raise their son and she feels like she's not appreciated because she's seen as just a stay-at-home mom and it it makes you think a lot like I this book had some pretty good quotes in it one thing that stood out was the idea of a working mom as if being a stay-at-home mom is not a job in itself and people are like oh she's a stay-at-home mom like oh she's a working mom like she has a job and she takes care of her kids but no one ever says working dad and so that was something that I was like, oh wow, you're right. Like no one ever does say working dad. Like that's just not really a thing that anyone thinks of. Um, and this book was a little bit gruesome. At one point there was some pretty detailed animal cruelty and I did not like that. But what was interesting about this is it's a satire on womanhood and motherhood. And then there's a touch of fantasy. Um, the mom starts to think that she is turning into a dog and she has all these weird things happening to her like there's fur growing on her in weird places she has a tail and she talks to her husband about it but he kind of like brushes it off like oh that's kind of weird um but in the end she kind of just embraces this and she becomes actually a really good mom because of it it's just like she has this elevated maternal instinct when she becomes a dog and I'm not going to talk about the ending because uh, obviously big spoiler, but it's a good ending and I actually really enjoyed this book. Um, the cover definitely made a lot of people turn their heads because it is definitely an interesting title and <laughs> a very interesting cover image. So that was Night Bitch. The second book that I read was The Crush, which was by Carla Sorensen. This book had no flames whatsoever. It was just very sweet romance. Um, I wouldn't say it was insta love, but it was kind of like second chance love. And it was a little bit too vanilla for my taste. Just the main male, male character was kind of boring and there weren't very many charming moments just because it seemed more like domestic and mundane than I would like. It wasn't very passionate. So the, this was also a sports romance. It was a football romance. He is a professional football player and he moves away from home, away from the girl that he has a crush on. He didn't give like boyfriend vibes. He gave like husband material. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but just like, he was just so mature and he wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm so attracted to him. Like, I don't know. It was just, it was just a little boring for me, for my taste. So, let's move on to the next book that I absolutely adored. I really, really love this book and it's really popular and I think it deserves all the hype that it got. It was just done so well. This was the first time that I read a book that included 
some type of handicap. This book was called Archer's Voice by uh, Maya Sheridan. I gave it three flames because it wasn't really spicy, but it got the job done. So it was a small town romance, which I absolutely adore. So both Archer and Bree have pretty traumatic pasts. Archer is now mute and he doesn't talk to anybody in the town because no one has the ability to speak to him. Um, nobody knows sign language and he kind of is just a recluse. He just stays in his home and builds things. And he's very smart. He is a mathematician, like he has brain power. And then we have Brie. She moved from, I don't know where she was from actually, I forgot. But she left the town that she was staying, that she lived in, um, and she moved all the way to Maine, which is where she meets Archer. This book was just so well written, and I love Archer so much. He is just so adorable, and he's just so soft for Brie, and I just adore him so much. He's so cute. I would say that this was a friends to lovers. Which so <laughs> the next book that I read was part of a series called Devil's Night. It was by Penelope Douglas and if anybody knows anything about Penelope Douglas is that her books are dark and really not conventional. Like some of these tropes made me think, do I really want to be reading this book? Like it was very dark. Sometimes dark romance, especially on Kindles, are kind of odd and this book was no exception. This was probably one of the weirdest series that I've read in a long time. There's just all these questionable things going on and I really did have to imagine, like really go deep into my book loving subconscious and think, okay, like I'll let this slide, like this is fine. The series goes Corrupt, Hideaway, Kill Switch, and then Nightfall and each book follows one boy. There are four guys, they're high school guys, they all play basketball, and they all have major issues, like daddy issues, uh, they're violent. Um, one of them is like a borderline rapist, and all of them somehow have a romance. It was book number three, Kill Switch, which follows Damon and Winter that was the hardest one for me to read. It was kind of a disgusting book and I honestly loathed it. I honestly loathed it a little bit. I, I couldn't romanticize the characters. Um, I think book two was my favorite just because the guy in book two wasn't completely depraved and he was kind of a gentleman and I did like him a lot more than the other guys. The premise of the book is there's these four guys, high school guys, they go out every day before Halloween on what they call Devil's Night, do a bunch of really illegal pranks like arson and burglary or beating people up and then they host this huge party kind of to boost the morale of the school like basketball team but I think it's also just because they have nothing better to do with their lives and they're basically vagrants and they're all rich boys so I don't know if they really should be doing stuff like this but they can get away with a lot because they are rich. Anyways, one night everything goes completely sideways and three of the four of them get sent to jail for three years. And so the thing about this book is it goes to the past and then the present. So the book does take place three years later, like after they get out of jail, but then it also goes back to the night that is significant in this case. And I mean, the book was really entertaining. Like I did finish all four of them within a week, but they were just so disturbing. And I was kind of disgusted by the guys in these books. Like they were not good people at all. And it's kind of crazy because I know a lot of people do really like these guys and I just want to say to the whole book community like you can like dark romance but if you ever meet people like in these books like please run away because there were 10 million red flags and that is not a healthy relationship it's very toxic. So the last book that I read this month maybe my second favorite right after Archer's Voice was 
The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. And there is a third book coming out literally after I finished the second book. I was so disappointed. I started tearing up like literally in the middle of a park and I was just gonna literally cry. Uh, then I found out that a third book was coming and hope was restored at least I hope so she has a reading tonight Like she's doing a reading on her Instagram today And I'm definitely gonna be there because I need to know what happens in the third book like You can't leave me with this cliffhanger in the second book like oh, it just destroyed me anyways the last graduate second book in a series um, called the school Amants. so the first book was called deadly education it is this really good book, really good book, great world building. There's all these rules in the book that are just so random that she just made from the top of her brilliant brain. Like everything is just wonderful about this book and it's such an interesting world and it all takes place in a school. It's kind of like a boarding school because you go into the school as a freshman and you only can leave if you survive till senior year. And that's pretty daunting the school basically, it's trying to protect its students, but it's not really doing that good of a job because there are these creatures called Mal's for short, and I think it's called Maleficaria. And there are all these different types of creatures that basically get into the school. The school happens, like it lives in this abyss, basically this dimension that doesn't exist, but does exist at the same time. And there are wards around the school, but somehow like the creatures can slip in sometimes and they eat the students throughout the school year. So the students are always on edge. Like you enter a classroom, you have to check on your desk, under your chair, you have to check compartments, always be ready to cast a spell because you can die so easily in the school. Even in the cafeteria, when you're getting yourself food, you need to like make sure that you're looking at what you're getting because there are like monsters everywhere. And the main character in this book is Galadriel. She is the daughter of a well-known healer. Basically, her mom is just this goddess of a woman who she gives away her healing spells and potions for free. Like she just loves to help people. There's never a cost or just a bargain that she has to like make. She just is so helpful to everybody. And because this world is so ironic, it births Galadriel. Well, her mom births her, but because her mom is so good, in order to counter that goodness, because this world is all about balance, there's this prophecy that she is a dark sorceress who is going to destroy all of the enclaves. Enclaves? Yes. So enclaves are basically, there's one in every country, every state of the US, I think. And they're basically these giant covens of wizards and they share their power in their group. Some enclaves are more powerful than others. Like there's the New York enclave and there's the Hong Kong enclave. The Bangkok enclave got wiped out. Um, but basically there's this prophecy and everybody's scared of her because she's really powerful. She can destroy like a whole city in just one spell. She's just very powerful. Nobody really knows that about her until her senior year though. She kind of keeps it on lock. And she's not very popular. She doesn't have a lot of friends. There's this one boy at the school of Mance named Orion. He's from the New York Enclave. And he's basically indestructible. He's a hero. He can kill Mal so easily. In fact, Mal's run away from him because He's just so good and effective at killing them. He's like the golden boy of the school and he really likes Galadriel even though nobody else does. Galadriel, she's kind of mean. She doesn't really talk to anybody. She is really feisty, her words bite, and he just likes to be around her. Orion is just so soft for her. He doesn't care about anybody except for her. Not that he's a mean guy, it's just that nobody really crosses his attention. He'll forget people's names unless they're standing right next to Elle. In The Last Graduate, it's their senior year and they're coming up with this plan on how they're going to get out of the school, how to graduate without everybody dying. And so it's a really good book and I cannot wait for book three. I honestly, it's a YA and I really highly recommend reading 
the School of Minutes series by Naomi Novik. It is so well done. Thanks for watching and see you later.